David, a brilliant architect, and Georgia, a renowned art dealer, both have prosperous professional lives, but they have been estranged for years and only have bouts of bitterness for each other. The only thing the ex-couple has in common is their daughter Lily, whom they both adore. Lily, on the other hand, is set to graduate, and the ceremony will bring the two of them together. While Lily makes certain that they do not have to face one other, the seating arrangement at the ceremony positions them right on the square with each other. The two are seated next to each other, and their competitive, hostile attitude is clear. While they strive to be supportive of their daughter, this passage alone establishes their hatred for one another. Cut to the opening credits, as Lily is preparing for her trip to Bali with her roommate, best friend Ren. The girls have worked hard for their graduation, and the trip to Bali allows them to relax before beginning their working lives like their parents. Life, on the other hand, has different plans for Lily. Despite the fact that Lily is a studious kid who intends to make this vacation into a work vacation, she falls in love. When she meets Jeed, a local seaweed farmer, sparks fly. A few episodes establish their comfort and chemistry, and the next thing we know, they decide to marry. This frightens David and Georgia, who reunite on their journey to Bali. While they still dislike each other, they agree that their daughter's marriage at such a young age is inappropriate. They don't want their daughter to suffer the same fate as they did in a marriage that began too young and ended too soon. So they decide to band together on their flight to Bali, deciding to present a united face when it comes to putting themselves into situations that could destroy their daughter's special day. If you ask me, the method they use is simply terrible. The exes devise a strategy that includes them being completely fine with the marriage from the start. The two of them pretend to be sincerely supportive, but deep down they are both devising methods to wreck the marriage before it even starts. David and Georgia agree on a strategy to first sow doubt in Jeed's mind. When they first encounter him, David approaches them and informs them that their marriage will fail because Lily is an ambitious girl who doesn't want to dwell in this paradise for very long. He also says that before he knows it, she'll be planning a move to a place with a work culture that can accommodate her dreams that go far beyond seaweed farming. While this ruse raises some doubts in Jeed's mind, it is not enough for him to flee. Georgia then chooses to take the next step. The next of several traditional marriage traditions is a ring ceremony, in which the groom's younger brother is required to carry the ring until it is time for them to assist the bride and groom with it. Georgia decides to entice the kids with one of her older slit banana peel tricks. She then steals the ring from Jeed's younger cousin, causing the ceremony to be disrupted. On David and George's flight to Bali, we meet Paul for the first time. He is a pilot who is madly in love with Georgia, so much so that his character resembles someone who is willing to agree to anything their lover says, causing their relationship to deteriorate. We meet Paul the morning after David and Georgia get incredibly drunk and wind up sleeping in the same bed after we somehow manage to land them safely in Bali. Paul is coming not only to surprise her, but also to propose to her. He proposes to Georgia for the first time in the temple, which they all visit on an off day. He is bitten by a dangerous snake and is transported to the emergency room. He accidentally elbows Jaragria in the nose the next time he does it. After Paul is taken to the emergency room, the remainder of the group continues on to the final stop on their tour for the day. Georgia, who was with Paul in the emergency unit, chooses to join them at the last minute. So, as the four of them, Jeed, Lily, Georgia, and David, are admiring the beauty of the paradise, they notice that their boat, which David swears is tethered to the shore, is floating away. Because it is a secluded location, they are compelled to stay the night until someone arrives in the morning. When the quadruple is about to pitch a tent, Lily searches George's backpack for a light and instead finds the rings. The simple answer is no. Despite their best efforts, David and Georgia are unable to destroy or disrupt Lily's marriage.
However, several speculative steps are taken once they arrive, with both Lily and Jeed debating whether or not they should marry. But that has less to do with David and George's smart techniques and more to do with cold feet. The climax of Ticket to Paradise reveals that Lily, despite her initial skepticism, comes to the realization that staying in this place with Jeed will be the biggest and most significant decision of her life. David and Georgia had both stopped resenting each other after seeing Lily through to this point. In fact, the vacation has brought them closer together in several ways. So the marriage ceremonies take place, and Lily and Jeet are wedded when Lily pierces a blade into an offering dish. The film's last segment has all of the visitors, including David and Georgia, boarding the ferry to the mainland. When they say their goodbyes and board the ferry with Ren and the others, Georgia informs David that she has turned down Paul's proposal to marry her. As a result, in a spur-of-the-moment decision, both of them jump off the ferry midway. People have diverse ideas of what success truly means, and success can take many different forms. It's as simple as living well and laughing frequently for me. However, the concept of living well is a very wide phrase. In my perspective, living well entails achieving success in one's personal, social, and professional life. If I can accomplish those three levels of success, I will have lived well and given life a fair shot. Personal achievement for me is being able to enjoy the small pleasures that life has to offer. For example, learning and embracing diversity, and investigating how people think throughout the world, even if I don't always agree with their thinking, fascinates me to no end. Having that feeling, knowing that someone else loves me, makes me feel utterly satisfied and successful, because I believe that without love, life is incomplete, and without it, success is impossible. Social success is heavily influenced by the natural characteristics that I, as a human, possess. For example, I've made good friends on whom I can rely as much as they can on me. Having dependable friends is thus an important aspect in deciding success. I know that if I need assistance with anything, there will always be someone willing to assist me. Learning how to treat others well is an important element of achieving societal success.